We, we, to quickly proceed with the subject to uh, Yuk Suan Zong, am I saying this correctly? Almost. <laughs> uh, okay, you, you, you uh, may repeat it correctly. Um, uh, Yuk Suan is uh, a PhD student in uh, the wireless group of Thomas Vatain at INRIA and Sorbonne. And uh, you will, as Hannes already announced, you will now talk about more specific uh, solutions using ad hoc uh, uh, of remote attestation. So it's actually a good flow we have. Yeah, I also find it interesting because like the last presentation is about uh, like is, is remote attestation relevant to embedded devices and my topic is exactly doing remote attestation for embedded devices. Um, okay. No, sorry. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, so like this, the topic compared to the one that Hannes just talked about. So my topic is will be more specific, uh, like doing remote attestation, especially for re uh, embedded devices, which is low power constraint environments. So uh, let me start with firstly the microcontroller that I'm working on. Um, so this micro robot is uh, called DotBot, which is developed by our team. Um, actually, we develop it for like education and also uh, research purpose. So right now we are using it for testing algorithms and protocols. So it uh, supports low power wireless communication and also indoor localization. And it has the model driver to move around and operate on two A batteries. So actually our goal is to have thousands of uh, dot bots to establish a swarm of dot bots. And the swarm here means like a large number of dot balls uh, operate coordinately to achieve a same task. So for example, the process here will be like each, uh, each dot bot communicates with the gateway using radio and then the gateway is physically connected using UART uh, with the controller and the controller use either HTTP or MQTT MQTT to communicate with the user. And the return journey is the same, like the user can relay the commands until the gateway and the gateway communicates with the dot bot. And so my focus of research is that uh, um, how could we ensure that the dot bot is running on a verified and correct version before allowing it to join the swarm. Like, what if uh, there's a bad and malicious dot bot that will destroy the whole swarm? So here the problem statement is to, like, how we can ensure that only the verified and trustworthy software and hardware configurations can be allowed to join the swarm. Um, so obviously, only the verified and up-to-date firmware version can be allowed, neither the old version, compromised version, and uh, tempered version, they cannot be allowed. So obviously, the solution is to do remote attestation. And uh, as Hannes has already presented uh, the remote attestation, I'm just going to give a short recap. So there's a working group in ITF called RES, and they have defined the procedures and architectures for remote attestation. And generally, there are three entities, attester, verifier, and the relying party. So the attester should generate uh, reliable evidence that uh, transfers to the verifier, and the verifier consumes the evidence and uh, produce the attestation result. And the relying party is the final entity that can decide uh, application specific actions and consume the attestation result. So in our case, it will be like the dot bot is the attester, the, uh, the gateway is the relying party, and the, a third party is the verifier. Um, so also the REST uh, working group has defined two models for uh, performing remote attestation. So the first one is background check model. So here the attester is, connect, uh, is communicating directly with the relying party. 
uh, and the evidence is sent to relying party first and then uh, forward to the verifier and the verifier can send the attestation result back to the relying party. And the second one is passport model. So the, they name it passport model because it's very similar to how a citizen apply a passport. So imagine here is a citizen who is the attester. So he wants to apply the passport. So he needs to send all of his information and documents to the embassy. So here the documents serve as the evidence and the embassy embassy here is the verifier. So after the embassy checks all the documents are verified, it, uh, they can uh, generate the passport for the citizen, which served as the attestation result. And then uh, uh, whenever the citizen wants to go aboard, it can carry this passport, which is the attestation result, to the airport immigration service and uh, to go aboard. So um, actually, there's already uh, ongoing work, as Hans already uh, mentioned, uh, as attested TLS. Uh, so they performed the remote attestation over TLS, where they define the evidence and attestation resource to be a new TLS extensions. And they finished the remote attestation alongside the handshakes of uh, TLS. Um, and, but like still one limitation here is that actually TLS requires uh, high memory and energy uh, requirements, which is not that suitable for the low power constrained devices. So that's why uh, today I want to present another protocol called ad hoc, uh, ephemeral default helmet over COSI. So this is a newly standardized protocol in IETF by Lake Working Group. And here the ad hoc protocol is more lightweight and compact uh, and it, ha has, it, ha uh, it can achieve the same functionality as TLS. So they also have the three handshakes to uh, have the authenticated key exchange. And there's already a paper that did the experiments for comparing the DTLS uh, with ad hoc. So as you can see in the figure on the right, uh, if both DTLS and ad hoc are using raw public key for authentication, then DTLS has about uh, more than 800 bytes, uh, while ad hoc has about 200 bytes, which is like kind of four times less than uh, the T DTLS. Um, so uh, in this uh, ad hoc protocol, they have also defined a specific field called EAD, uh, external authorization data where they allow some extra data to be carried along with ad hoc. So the, here the EAD is where we want to uh, perform the remote attestation over ad hoc. Um, so what I'm working on right now is another ongoing project in IETF Lake Working Group. So we have an internet drive uh, to define how to perform remote attestation over ad hoc. So we kind of, uh, um, we do this remote attestation uh, following the RAS architecture and also thanks to attested TLS because they have uh, defined a high level standardization so they kind of guide people to uh, define their own uh, remote attestation message processing. So uh, we also learn from the attested TLS and uh, now I'll give some details about this internet draft about how to perform the uh, attestation over ad hoc protocol. Um, so if you still remember the figure that I have for the swarms of dot bots, here I'm just mapping the uh, swarm of dot bots to remote attestation. And here the attester is each dot bot. So the dot bot needs to generate the evidence about itself and then send it to a central server who can control the access to the network swarm. And then the verifier, which is a third party, can uh, evaluate the evidence and returns the result. Uh, so here the ad hoc session is between the attester and the relying party. So if we look for more details, uh, this draft uh, actually defines three types of uh, remote attestation, the forward remote attestation, reverse attestation, and mutual attestation. So the features is like, um, like I said, uh, it has less memory and energy consumption because it's over a lightweight protocol 
ad hoc. And also it is efficient because it can achieve the network authentication in parallel with the attestation. And the attest all the attestation items are carried in the EAD field, uh, the ex external authorization data field over ad hoc. And always the uh, ad hoc session is between the attester and the relying party. So now we'll like look these three types of remote attestation one by one. So the first one is the most common one, where, which the use case is that when uh, IoT device wants to attest itself, for example, the dot bot one. Um, so uh, the whole process is like the figure here. Um, the attester will start the remote attestation by sending the first ad hoc message and carry the attestation proposal in ad hoc EAD1. And here the attestation proposal is uh, an array of uh, integers which can indicate what kind of evidence it can generate. So typically uh, the integers are already registered and the uh, IANA registry uh, for like Co-op content format, for example. So this integer can uh, indicate uh, whether the, the evidence will be in CBOR or JSON, and also uh, can indicate the profile of the evidence. So for example, uh, it can indicate the PSA, uh, like the evidence is in format of uh, PSA or other like call suite or some other profiles. And then this, uh, the relying party will not treat with this message, but will like directly send forward it to the verifier to let the verifier decide which kind of evidence it want to uh, it can evaluate. So the verifier will return the selected evidence type, uh, and then the relying party will. Uh, generate the message two, which contains the attestation request in EAD2. So this attestation request is just an, an integer to indicate which kind of evidence it's selected to, uh, to be the evidence. And then the third ad hoc message is just that the attester sent the evidence in EAD3, and then the uh, verifier uh, evaluates the evidence and sends back the attestation result. So then uh, we are thinking that uh, not only the, the, the IoT device needs to be attested, sometimes it may happen that the server needs to be attested. So for example, the IoT device wants to share some sensitive data and it needs to know that the server can be trusted to share. So that's why we also define the reverse attestation here to let the server to become an attester so the process is that the, um, the device will trigger uh, to signal to the, uh, the server that uh, you need to do a remote attestation. And then the server will start the first ad hoc message by sending a result proposal. Because here, actually, we are applying the passport model because we assume the IoT device is a low power constraint device. So we don't want it to have more connections. So we let the server to uh, have the connection with the verifier. So that's why we are doing passport model here. And the message one is, as I said, res result proposal. So here, the result proposal actually contains a list of uh, verifier identities. Uh, like from, from which the server can get the attestation result. And then the, uh, the uh, relying party, the, the IoT device, can uh, select one verifier identity from the list uh, to indicate that, uh, uh, that th this verifier can be trusted, the result from this verifier can be trusted by the device. So this is what is sent in the message to result request, which contains only one single verifier identity. So then the uh, server needs to get the attestation result from that selected verifier and then give the uh, IoT device the attestation result. So as we already have the forward um, remote attestation and the reverse attestation, uh, we also have this mutual attestation. Um, I have many arrows here, but actually it's not that complicated. Uh, it's just like to combine the last two, uh, the, the, like the figure of the last two slides. So um, also the IoT device 
doesn't have more connections, and the process will be like the attest. Uh, sorry, the uh, LT device will firstly be the attester to start the mutual attestation. So it will send firstly the attestation proposal to the server, and then it uh, continue with the forward remote attestation, and the server will start the reverse attestation uh, from ad hoc message two, and doing it in passport model. So uh, as you can see, we have four messages here, and ad hoc also like, has de defined an optional fourth mes message. So here we have four messages in total, and the last message is uh, the server sending back the, the attestation result. So that's how we uh, how if both the the device and server want to do a remote attestation, they can achieve it at the same time, uh, because ad hoc uh, supports many EAD items in EAD fields. So that's why we can achieve mutual attestation here. And finally, I want to share some uh, implementations because I actually I have just started, and. Uh, for the attester, because the evidence is kind of a core part for remote attestation. So once the attester is required to generate the evidence, it needs to call for its attestation service to generate the evidence. And uh, what we have right now is that the uh, evidence is in a format of signed attestation token, which is defined in draft EAT that uh, Hannes has also mentioned in the last uh, presentation. So uh, we have the, we don't have the evidence in code z one structure, and we have a very initial example to do an onboarding check, which the overall says is about 227 bytes. Um, I know it's still not, not small enough, but uh, I think it's uh, already uh, much smaller than, uh, than other like to token sizes. Um, so, as you can see, we have the nuns, which is to guarantee the message freshness, and we have the ID of device, and then we have the measurements claim, which carries the evidence of the attestation. And then for the verification process, it will be like, firstly, the verifier parses the code of sign one structure, and then check the signature, check the nuns, and check the evidence. Uh, and Actually, I'm still working on it, so I'm trying to have a demo maybe for the next IETF, I think. So that's all for the uh, remote attestation for embedded device. And also, we are like also open for collaborations if anyone is interested. So that's all. Thank you for the attention. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, questions, comments? Hi, thank you for the presentation. Uh, at the start of the presentation, you talked about the project you're doing with the university, like these little mini bots. I feel like I want some context to that because you mentioned 1,000 mini bots like you are a Disney supervillain. Uh, sorry, what, what is it? You mentioned uh, like these little robots at the start of the presentation, these 35 US dollar or euro robots. What's. Ah, uh, uh, okay, so you're talking about the dot bot? Yeah. Oh, yeah, because like uh, we. <laughs> um, so this dot bot right now we have it uh, like in two versions. One is an RF52 and another is 53. So uh, we, I, I, I mentioned that it's 35 euros because it's not expensive at all. And also we are kind of uh, uh, to let more people know that dot bot is very uh, suitable for both research and education. And yeah, we, and also, as I said, we are planning to have uh, like thousands of uh, adult bots, and we are right now actually doing it because we want to finally have a swarm of adult bots to let uh, both industry and the academics to have to like to be able to test their protocols if they need a swarm of adult bots and like it's not expensive. So, what, try our adult bot. <laughs> yeah. uh, just to complete the context because I didn't hear it. Uh, 
the dot bots run riot, right? Oh, sorry. The dot bots run riot, right? Correct? Uh, yes, Thomas, one, one time, yes. Okay, good. More remarks. Ah. Hi, um, I have a, uh, thanks for the presentation. And I have a question on the previous slide. Uh, so um, did you, you for this, uh, for the evidence for the attestation token, did you select some fields out of the collection of fields that are available in EAT, or did you use some of the, for example, the PSA at the station token format? Okay, so um, the, the the whole structure is followed EAT, and mm -hmm. also it's indicated in EAT that for the measurements claim, you can decide to, to use call suite, which is consigned software identification. So um, as I have also looked at uh, PSA, but as PSA, actually it has more, it, like the size is larger. Um, so I want to have the least size of tokens. So I choose to use call suite here for uh, carrying the evidence. So as you can see uh, in the measurements claim, it has content format uh, of uh, call suite, which is 258. And then it's uh, all the mandatory attributes of call suite to carry the evidence. And we have the hash value of the firmware image uh, in, on, in the bottom, which is, uh, is uh, yes, using the hash uh, SHA256 to, to generate the hash of the firmware image. Yeah, so in this example, we are using CallSuite. You um, you might want to look at the, there's another document uh, called Software Measurements, uh, which is not as complicated as uh, CosWid. So it may, uh, it allows you to reduce the size of the token. Uh, so that okay. would be good. Um, the On the verifier side, are you using your own verifier or did you? Uh, or you mean the virus that is developed by TLS? Because I know that they have the verifier of another like independent product called Verizon. Yeah. Because um, right now we want a very simple initial implementation. So I haven't looked in detail for the Verizon. Um, right now we are developing our own verifier, which uh, is which we want to integrate with another ongoing project in Lake is for authorization. So yeah, right now we are trying to integrate the verifier with the uh, enrollment server, which like which is the the third party of uh, authorization draft. Yep. So we are trying to make it uh, like as simple as possible. Okay. So if there's no more question remark, we thank you again. Yeah. Wish you all. All success for the future um, implementations.